The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. All right, Mike Clowney, uh, game week finally here. Uh, after, gosh, 700 some odd days, football finally comes back to Mossy Creek. Uh, open us up with a, a statement about uh, starting the year off with the West Georgia Wolves at Burktar Stadium. Well, it's an exciting time. I know our kids are excited. You know, we've been, we, with the, the, what happened in the spring, not playing, you know, guys come in working out in the summer. Like, the reason they do it is to be able to play football games at some point in time. So we've been back here. We've been in camp. Um, and we've been wrestling around, pushing on each other, getting irritable with one another. And, you know, and now it's time for us to kind of stand on the sideline and play together. Uh, West Georgia, a team that uh, hasn't dotted the schedule for Carson Newman in a decade and a half. Uh, you were on the field the first time <laughs> these teams got together in the playoffs in 95 and 96. Uh, what do you remember about those games as a player? Um, it was my actual first game back from injury. Um, and I remember going down, and they had a drive together pretty early. And I think we put, we were able to put a goal line stand together and won, win the football game, played them a couple times in the playoffs, and then kind of re-sparked us. We used to have a Ken Hyder Classic down in Rome, Georgia, where we played West Georgia. So it was good to kind of be able to get back on the field with West Georgia again. A face uh, on the opposite sideline that's a little familiar to, to Carson Inman, while West Georgia might not be over the last decade and a half. David Dean, uh, certainly the Eagles uh, familiar with him uh, when he was the head coach of the Blazers. Valdosta State, what typifies his teams? You know, naturally, Davis did a good job at Valdosta, won that championship at Valdosta, but, you know, his guys always, they're always athletic. You know, he does a great job recruiting athletic guys from the state of Georgia down there. You know, the teams are always well coached. Offensively, you know, we've always kind of been in some dog fights with them at Valdosta. You know, unfortunately, they probably, they won more than we have, but um, always well coached, hard, they play hard, just always been a fun game when we played Dean's team. Uh, you think about the preparation for this. Uh, how much of it is old hat at this point preparing for the unknown? Because there's no tape on West Georgia for the last two years. Yep. So I think it's the thing that goes back to, you know, us. And, you know, biggest thing we want to do is try to do what we do well, you know, not necessarily focus on West Georgia as much as we focus on Carson Newman. And so that's kind of been our mantra going through fall camp. You know, naturally there's some things that they do that we have to game plan and work on. But the main overall emphasis is for us to go what do what we do well. Uh, who surprised you through camp? I think there are several guys. Um, Trey, naturally, has done, continued to good, do a good job. We've the situation on the offensive line, man. Ethan Marshall is is done a really good job for us, kind of stepping up. Cody Sullivan, you know, was out for a little while, but Cody is has done a great job. Ty Raglan, you know, I can basically go through those guys on the offensive line. You know, the situation that we put them in and the way that we've challenged them to just kind of watch them grow and accept that role has been really fun to watch. What's uh, what sticks out to you about their growth and development over the last month? They've been resilient. You know, sometimes it's easy to kind of back yourself in the corner and get frustrated or down on yourself. But those guys have been pretty resilient. You know, they've battled, you know, whenever something's gone, injury or, you know, just a hard day, a couple of guys, you know, sick, in and out. But, like, they just continue to find a way as a group to mold themselves back together. Uh, offensively, uh, you, you, bring, you mentioned Trey Mitchell. Uh, what's he done to secure the keys to that – starting quarterback job after kind of sharing time with Tyler Packers. Yeah. He's been consistent, you know, and I think there's still guys there that are really working and competing. Michael Young, who's been here forever. You know, Michael come in as a quarterback. We moved in receiver, we moved back to quarterback. You know, Michael's done a really good job competing, but Trey overall is the consistency there. Uh, West Georgia, I mean, I, I guess not that much of a surprise for a David Dean team. Uh, his teams at Valdosta State always loaded with transfers. You take a look at uh, some Mercer footage if it's available. Uh, <laughs> put eyes on, on the starting quarterback. Uh, uh, how do you prepare for that glut of uh, incoming new talent? You know, I think we, we've been able to kind of just get some information of guys down that way. We got a lot of guys that play down that way that knows. You know, those guys just kind of basically getting a little bit of heads up from ex-players. You know, they always look the volunteer information. So um, that's primarily on him, a lot of information we have since there's not video there. But the same thing, you know, we've got to make sure quarterback naturally with what he does, them throwing the football, 
and then you know there's going to be some runs in there. Just make sure that we're prepared for QB runs as well. Uh, Latter two years ago, their secondary was top end, uh, and, and they returned a fair amount uh, in the back end between uh, you know, Chris Blackston and MJ Latimer. Uh, top pass defense from 2019 in the Gulf South. Uh, who knows what your offense is going to look like, uh, but at, with your receiving core, with a new quarterback, uh, what challenges does their secondary pose? You know, they do a great job. You know, they're super athletic. They play a lot of man coverage. You know, they're going to get in, get in your face and just try to force you to make quick throws, and they're talented enough to cover for that period of time. You know, the biggest thing we challenge our guys with is, is get off of get off of guys, be able to run, attack with speed, you know, make sure we understand what we're doing to try to find open spaces in the defense. But, you know, the biggest thing we've got to do is compete. You've been the head coach here for a year and a half, and arguably your first home game should have a little oomph to it. Does it – has it dawned on you? Does it uh, – uh, do you have any sort of appreciation that this is happening, or is it just the, uh, I don't know, the emotion of the last yeah. <laughs> year and a half has just made this weird? You know, it's not just me, but I think our kids are excited about playing at home. You know, it's been a while since they've been here, so I think that's something super exciting for them. But for me, it's, it's to a point I was like, I'm just ready to get to the game. <laughs> you know, I'm, I am ready to play football. I'm ready to coach football. I'm ready to see our kids play. Uh, how excited are you to have fans in the stands? It's exciting because, like, this is, you know, um, we had a meeting here the other day and just to realize, like, you know, what this game means to so many other people on campus. You know, we go out and we work every day, and, like, for us it's about making kids better. But it does matter to other people on campus and to give them an opportunity to support our kids and our kids an opportunity to display the things that they work on for our fans is, is something that we're excited about.